The future of steroids. What we're going to see in the future based on my analysis of taking care and working with thousands of men over more than 15 years using anabolic steroids and other performance enhancement drugs. Because this is not just about muscle building. I have experiences with bodybuilders, powerlifters, strong men, variety of pro athletes, actors, models, military, and police. And of course, in the end of the day, I work with average men that are just using steroids and PEDs for personal reasons. Let's talk about what a PED is because this is the future performance enhancement drugs, which there are many, and I will take from the head down. They're there for improvement of performance, cognitive performance all the way down to physical performance. Press. Starting at the top, central nervous system drugs. You're gonna see stimulants and amphetamines already that we have these. People don't think about those as PEDs, but they are PEDs, and that's where some of the pro athletes that aren't so big, these are the drugs they use. ADD meds, cognitive function meds, drugs we use to stay awake because they stimulate the brain, and there's no question that athletes can perform better when their brain is more stimulated. Next, cardiovascular function, erythropoietin, EPO, classically used by the professional bikers to increase their oxygen carrying capacity. You're going to see drugs like this are going to continue to be used and abused. And of course, there will always be iterations and new formulations of these drugs from pharmaceutical companies and non-pharmaceutical companies. Then we come down to anabolic androgenic steroids. <clears throat> this is the classic pad of use since the last 50 years. It's going to be business as usual. These drugs are effective, they're accessible, and they're affordable. They're used by millions and millions of people for muscle building, fat burning, and they're the usual drugs. You can see all my classic presentations on these drugs from testosterone derivatives, oral drugs, uh, Dianabol, Anadrol, Trenbolin, all the drugs will continue to be used because of accessibility across the world with the internet. They're not going to go away. And because of the other aspects that I'll cover are going to be more expensive, these are going to be always going to be the, the base, the main base of drugs. And in the future, not drug companies probably, but there'll be underground labs and there'll be more people altering these drugs and designing personal steroids. They're gonna be personalized. Designer steroids, they're here today. They're gonna to be using them to mitigate the side effects just as we looked at steroids back in the 1960s with a real scientist. They're always working on that. They're always coming up with new drugs. I see it all the time quite esoteric chemistries. They don't always work, but it is amazing. And you will see more and more of that forever, especially with people have accessibility to lab techniques because technology is advancing and people have uh, accessibility to these because of the internet. Next, SARMs. There's no question that selective angiogen receptor modulators are gonna play a huge role in the future. I don't think we have really one today that's effective and safe, that's actually a SARM, that's selective androgen just to the muscle skeletal, leaving out the brain, leaving out the pituitary gonad access, not to mention adverse effects in the heart and the kidney system, for an example. But you will see in the future that someone one day, hopefully for medical purpose and for people to stop suffering, to have better muscles as you're getting older, to feel better for ethical reasons, you, I think you'll see a SARM, real SARM come out. I think this will happen. It's going to take time. And unfortunately, the politics is against it. But I think more and more with healthcare providers understanding that we should not 
politicize these drugs so much and we should look at these drugs to see how they can help people, you're going to see a real SARM one day finally be effective. Next, testosterone boosters and pro-hormones. Definitely today, there's natural ones we talk about, we see the boosters, and then there's, of course, synthetic. And you're going to see more and more of that, always people playing with those scientists and non-scientists trying to boost the natural side of your testosterone, androgen, blocking estrogen production, balancing it naturally, and also with human growth hormone. You're going to see all these boosters and types of drugs synthetically, they're going to do that naturally. It's going on today, and again, as science is improving always and more accessible for the common person that can just access the internet, you're going to see more and more of this stuff, and also sold. A lot of marketing. This is a trillion dollar market. Next, human growth hormone and IGF-1 and secretagogues. There's no question it's here today. It's only going to become more relevant, especially IGF-1, which is very, very expensive. And I still, to this day, don't even really know if it's really accessible, if anyone can get it. And if they can, which I think some people can, it's $5,000, $10,000 per month. Um, and we don't know if it's safe. So, and secretagogues, see my videos on Ipamorlin. You could talk about this and you could see this. We'd like to get discussions on this going. Next, common medicines are going to be used. This is part of the future and today. Insulin, thyroid preparations, clenbuterol, diuretics, and drugs, dangerous drugs like DNP are definitely in use today. And they will continue to be in use in the future because, again, of accessibility. And these things are relatively cheap. And people doctors and scientists are going to alter these, always going to be altering these to try to find new iterations and synthetic compounds that act like these agents and try to be new and improved. Now, in the end, what's going to happen? Gene doping through viral vectors and gene therapy. It's going to happen, folks. There's no question. Just today, this year, 2019, the FDA approved the first viral vector gene therapy for a rare disorder for infants, for newborn babies actually, spinal muscular atrophy. This is a infusion, one-time infusion in the hospital for this unfortunate, very rare, sick baby. And it is going to cost over $2 million dollars. This is the truth today. This is reality now. Does it work and how well does it work? It works to some degree. Otherwise, the FDA never would have approved it. Now, the insurers are discussing how they're going to pay for it. And they apparently will pay for it because in the end, it actually saves them money because over the first several years, uh, this unfortunate baby and this rare disease will suffer significantly and the cost of the insurer is dramatically higher than what this infusion will cost one time only. That's amazing. That's reality today. <clears throat> What's going to happen? There's no question. There's so much research in muscle wasting disorders like Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. This is already old news. They're going to alter they're going to affect the genes directly for this. And that's going to be beautiful for disease. And unfortunately, just like steroids, it's going to be used for performance. Is it happening today with myostatin inhibitors? You hear that it is, but I don't think it really is in the end of the day. What you see in those bodies is just incredible genetics on tons of steroids and other mixed pets, growth factors and insulin and so on and so forth. Uh, this is what you're seeing. Um, and, of course, there's a lot of health consequences with that. So, in the future, we will have to consider the health consequences of all these new drugs. Uh, even, of course, the gene doping. Is it going to be clean? Is that really going to go in and just alter a gene to get a specific effect without having side effects? Too early to tell. But you're talking this video will stand clear for the future because it will happen. And as we advance these changes, the medical technology is going to happen. It's going to definitely affect performance-enhancing drugs. Next, ethically. 
what's going to happen, just like steroids. I think steroids from the 1960s, they should be looked at. We should be studying these for helping people. Cross testosterone replacement is a steroid, and even that was politicized. Although thanks to myself and my colleagues and great people in the world and overall goodness and kindness, we're moving forward and we're getting less discrimination from healthcare providers. So in the future, we'll have to look at the ethical consequences of treating disease versus performance. We're going to see that. And of course, cost. Again, cost in the end is the reality. Someone can buy steroids today because they're relatively cheap. That's going to propel it into the future without doubt. A viral vector that's going to cost up to a million dollars a year or more, who's going to get that? People will use it. There are rich people in the world. They will be using this. Is that going to set up a divide between who has money and who doesn't? Are we going to see divide in the physiques? Are we going to see a divide in health and longevity? Of course we will. We're going to have to deal with that as we age and as time goes on. We need more studies, much more studies. We need more openness. We need discussion, education for people about what PEDS are today. And I want healthcare providers to really reach out and to open their minds and not discriminate on people that are using these drugs today because they think, oh, these people are not going to get hurt, they're going to be fine. The truth is people use these drugs, do not discriminate on them because they may get hurt. I really hope this helps. Thank you so much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy. Yeah.